Has a friend ever told you a story about someone who was in butthole, but over the course of the story you begin to realize that it's actually your friend who is the butthole? Met a girl at a party recently who told one two men and then we got kicked out stories. Oh, you're not a wild party person, you're just a horrible human. A friend didn't show up for her side job, where I work, for 3 weeks without telling anyone then got pee when they hired someone else. She keeps going on and on about how everything is going wrong for her, but maybe there's a reason for that. My ex, telling a story about her awful neighbors. She and her friends just wanted to party in the middle of the night, so when the cops came, they turned down the music. When the cops left, they turned it up again. But the neighbors were so unfriendly after that. Can you believe it? Yes. Yes I can. A family member was telling a story about how she was shopping in a grocery store and there was an employee stocking the aisle right where the product she needed was. So I was standing there and waiting and waiting and finally I was like hello you and he finally asked me if he was in my way. Uhh yeah you were supposed to just say excuse me and he would have moved. It's incredible isn't it? I stared at her like she was a lunatic and everyone else ignored her. My former flatmate told me what in butthole her now ex-boyfriend is because he is still mad at her for cheating on him. She said to me she's sick of being a scapegoat and the incident was 4 months ago. She said she is a good person because she told him the very next morning that she cheated on him and she's very sorry. Freaking heck what goes on in the minds of these people is sometimes I will never understand. A girl I used to be friends with was telling me about some issues with the boyfriend she had at the time. I can't remember what it was about, but during an argument, the guy called her a tough cookie, she looked so offended, and said that it didn't sit well with her, and he also texted her daily, and she did not like that. I thought these offenses were pretty normal things and she looked at me as if I was being unreasonable for disagreeing with her. Well, they broke up, and stayed friends while she would make the occasional post about how exes weren't worth her time and all that jazz. The guy always commented on them. All sad and stuff. We are not friends anymore. I had a friend complain to me about how a mutual guy friend's wife was being a bee to her at a party and being totally possessive of the guy friend. According to her, the wife spent the evening glaring at her, making pointed digs, and excluding her from a backyard smoke session. Why would she act that way? I wondered. Wife was a really relaxed, kind person usually. Turns out the wife was angry because friend spent the majority of that evening perched on the guy's lap and playfully refusing to let him leave her. She also accidentally left her bra in his car earlier that day when she was changing clothes at the lake. His wife found it and was not amused. And yet when I pointed out that she was not being appropriate she insisted that is all perfectly fine because he's like a brother to her. This is about 40% of my sister's stories. She has pretty extreme untreated bipolar disorder and when it gets bad she becomes combative to the point that she looks for slights and insults. A server's smile is a smirk and everything other people do or say has a sinister motive. She is a very hard person to deal with. A friend of mine broke up with her boyfriend and gave me the details of their breakup. They visited his family in the countryside and stayed there for a weekend. She told me she was disrespected by everyone there. Here are a few highlights. She told me they didn't serve her a vegan meal, even through they knew she was a vegan. I asked her oh wow, how terrible, did they really let you starve while they were eating? Obviously, not. They prepared some rice and pasta for her but I quote they were so poorly done, they might as well be in for the dog. They stayed the night at her boyfriend's house, while some of their friend's house was nearby. In the middle of the night, she forced him to leave his parents house because it was too cold. She didn't ask for another blanket. She didn't ask to turn up the heat. She just told him to leave and go sleep at their friend's place. And they did. And a few other things. 50% of my co-workers. My reply typically is. Do you think that person shows up to work every day trying to ruin the company? If they answer yes we may work together. My ex and I worked at the same campus job for a while in college. We had remained friends so it was fine but I ended up getting her fired. So a bit later she is telling a bunch of people how much of an butthole I am for getting her fired just because we used to date. Explained how she had been having a rough semester and I'd kept waking her up early even though she'd had late nights studying. 
she'd had several meetings with the boss to work out scheduling so I wouldn't be bothering her but I'd started stealing her shifts. Two of the people in the group worked the same job but hadn't known she worked there until her rants. See the reason I called her several mornings is she was scheduled to work 8am with one of them her request so she would get up for classes. And literally never showed. I assisted the manager and covered for any no shows if I didn't have class. Those meetings with the manager was batting her eyelashes and convincing him to switch her schedule with the other guy who had afternoon shifts. He got shafted to morning to work with the other guy. She still no showed in the afternoon so I told the manager I was sick of covering her shifts and he fired her. So both guys went from sympathetic to pee as they realized she was the reason one of them got stuck on morning duty and the other had to call me every day to cover. And got yelled at by the boss for one day leaving desk uncovered because it was before he realized his partner never came and he missed one day. My mother loves to embellish stories in her favor. Here's a recent one. She and my brother went to Target. I think it was for school clothes or something. A bit of a big spend. Her side of the story was that the cashier barely tried to get her a receipt, wouldn't get management, and that it took over 20 minutes just to get a dang receipt. Of course, all the employees had an attitude, and every passing customer agreed with her. She posted this all on Facebook, tagging the specific location, and how she thankfully gave her 50% off her entire purchase. Then there's my brother's version. The actual shopping was fine, normal, average. She pays. But there's an issue with the register and it doesn't print a receipt. The cashier can't get the receipt himself. So management is called in. So while the manger goes to look up the receipt. Following transactions have buried it in the history. She stands right at the poor cashier's register. Huffing and puffing. Telling customers about her receipt. And repeating this is just ridiculous. It was closer to 10 minutes than over 20. I understand that this could be irritating. But she acted like an absolute bee. And then publicized it making her look like she stood up for herself when wronged. That she won. Ugh. Have a friend that talks about how awful his SO is. And how he loves when she's not home. But it's super uncomfortable because it's clear she cares a lot about him. And he treats her like crap regardless. Girl I'm friends with was venting about how her newish boyfriend is crazy and unstable. She spent about 10 minutes reading me texts from him and I was nodding and agreeing with her but I'll be damned if this dude wasn't on point. He called out all her bulls. Her bitching about being tired all the time and feeling like crap but any time she has without her kids is spent drinking instead of resting. Being a generally awful person. Hating her kids. Hating her baby daddy for not supporting her and kicking her out. She makes poor decision after poor decision. I wanna hang out with this guy cause he sounds like his crap is together aside from the fact he is dating her. I just go and introduce yourself to the guy cause he sounds awesome. I was thinking about that the other day. I work at Dunkin Donuts and this lady ordered a latte with two sugars at the bottom so that's what we gave her. She tasted it and said there was no sugar in it and told us we can't just add more because we have to stir it in and she doesn't want the froth messed up. So we added more and stirred it and then added froth to the top because we didn't want to waste it and the espresso machine would take too long. So I gave it back to her but she was like I was watching and I said not to stir it and that's what you did give me my money back. And I thought about how she probably told that story to her friends as if she was in the right and her friends were. Like wow you're kind of a bee. She would edit some of the story to make herself sound like a victim. Some notice when people do this, but others may not. So my workmate was telling me about her friend who lets out rooms to students in the lower half of her house. And when she wants privacy she just locks the stairwell door so they can't get up to the main floor of the house. I told her that was awful and those poor students in a country they don't know being locked downstairs of a house they pay to live in. Not a friend but my ex-wife was like this. Every time she got in an argument or quit a job she would tell me what happened and I would be like wow you are completely in the wrong in this situation. We married young and it took me a little while to learn that I had to basically throw out common sense and agree with her side if I didn't want to sleep on the couch. Thankfully she is someone else's problem now. Mayo literally the same thing here man. My soon to be ex-wife got fired from her job after being late so often. Her excuse was you get so many times of being late before anything happens and I wasn't even close yet yes you were. There's plenty more. Plenty. I had a friend who was always down on his luck. 
just couldn't catch a break, and I was always supporting and helping this poor guy, bringing him a can of gas when he ran out, helping him clean up his yard so he wouldn't lose his house, helping him move when he lost his house anyway, helping him work when he couldn't find an assistant, and paid, of course, and even lending him money, then my fiance and I let him move in with us, and holy crap what a mistake that was, he tried to get out of rent, made a bunch of promises about helping us with the house that he never followed through on, took everything off the shelves in my office and dragged them into the yard, why, filled our yard with trash, demanded extra rooms for his kids that he said wouldn't be living with him, and was so much of a nightmare that we evicted him after only 2 months, he had the nerve, at that point, to tell me if you do this we aren't friends anymore. This was 2 years ago, and neither my house nor yard have recovered from the damage he did. In a mere 60 days he somehow filled the yard with so much trash and scrap wood that it took 8 people a full weekend and 5 dump runs just to get it into a semblance of cleanliness. And there are still 2 huge piles of scrap wood I figure I can cut up for firewood. I won't go into detail on the damage to the house, but it will cost me at least 10,000 to repair. In hindsight, all of those stories he told with the bad bosses, bad landlords, bad housemates, yeah, pretty certain he was the butthole. <laughs> now former, friend of mine from university, let's call him Carl, was receiving unsolicited flirty messages from another guy at uni, we'll call him Will, for months. Will would leave suggestive comments on Carl's Facebook posts, and Carl showed me a string of texts that he's received, like you're the hottest guy around, I love your muscles etc. Carl would get really angry and defensive about it, saying how he didn't want girls to think he was gay, he'd be about Will using homophobic slurs, make fun of his friends and brand him as creepy and weird. From my perspective it seemed like an overreaction. He's only flirting with you. Why don't you just ask him to stop although it did look a bit creepy to read these seeming random messages. After about 6 months of this back and forth, I decided to sit Will down and ask him, in private, what was going on because it didn't add up. Something didn't feel right. It turned out that it was Cal who had been initiating these conversations over text and leading Will on. Cal had been deleting his own messages from the conversation before showing them to me. To make it look like they were unsolicited. It was like a complete character smear. Will actually really liked him. In the end I decided to part ways with Carl. It's a super complicated situation because it appears like Carl is struggling to come to terms with who he is. But there's no way I could have maintained a friendship like that. I lost complete trust in him. That's actually pretty sad. I had a roommate who rode his bicycle everywhere and came home one day and said some butthole in a hummer tried to run him over. I was a bit surprised but I figured he on a bicycle, guy in a hummer, could be a possible close call misunderstanding thing. So when we were having some beers I asked him more about the situation and why some guy would just try to run him over. Turns out my friend was crossing at a light, saw this hummer sitting at the light and because of what he thinks about hummers and the people who drive them decided the correct course of action was to spit on the guy's car. So OBV when the light turned green the guy in the hummer drove after him, not to run him over, just to catch up with him and probably confront him about why he spit on his car for no reason. Yeah our housemate was unemployed and wasn't really trying that hard to get a job. It used to really bother one of the girls I lived with cause she worked and he was sponging of the system. So she tells me how she confronted him about this and lectured him about finding work and he basically told her to frick off and she was going on about how rude he was when she was trying to help. Whatever, he paid the rent on time and was easy to live with so what the heck is it to me if he works or is on the dole. Whatever, he paid the rent on time and was easy to live, seriously, that's already better than 99% of housemates. She didn't know how lucky she had it if her biggest complaint was that he was around the house too much. An acquaintance was telling me how she ended up with her boyfriend, which basically was only realizing she liked him after he got a girlfriend, them hooking up before he broke up with his girlfriend and then she complained how the other girl ignores them when she sees them. A guy that was more a friend of a friend was insulting a girl for leading him on when in fact he never talked to her, just created this fantasy life with her and then was crushed when she was already dating someone, not that she would have been interested in the first place. 
I actually know way too many guys who can't face rejection. Without blaming it one the girl. One guy complained how a mutual friend got mad at him for trying to comfort her when her boyfriend passed away unexpectedly. When he clearly tried to use it to get closer to her and she saw right through it. He was dropped from the friend group after that. In college I had a roommate who was completely oblivious. He had a 16 year old sister and one of his best friends, who was 25, had a crush on her. One night he told me a story about a party he threw where his sister, her boyfriend, and his buddy, the one who was 25, were present. During the party his friend tried to kiss his sister and her boyfriend told the guy to pee off. My roommate was pee off at the boyfriend, kicked him out and told him if he came back he would kick his butt. As he's telling me this story I'm sitting there in disbelief. Saw nothing wrong with his friend hitting on his 16 year old sister and considered the boyfriend to be in the wrong. The way he told the story he assumed that I would also view the situation in the same light. But didn't even bother trying to argue with him or make him see reason. What a freaking moron. Jesus. He does he even care about his sister's feelings on this. The guy basically tried to assault her. I was working in a warehouse several years ago and we sent Rob across the street to get us breakfast, since he wasn't much good for doing actual work. A few minutes after he got back, another man, landlord, walked in and said to Rob you're a lying son of a b Rob said he didn't know the man and that he'd never lived on camp road and he didn't know why a landlord was yelling at him. Landlord kept saying that Rob had told him that he had a twin brother, and he asked the people in the diner and they all said he didn't have a twin brother, so why was he lying to him? We all know, who is this guy and why is he yelling at Rob after a while of this? Landlord turned to us and said that he would tell us what Rob had done except that we were all eating. Then, of course, he told us what Rob had done. Landlord claimed that Rob had rented a trailer from him. And that he'd backed up the toilet and then kept crapping on the backed up toilet so that landlord had to clean the bathroom out with a shovel. What a crazy story, right? Rob wouldn't do a thing like that. It occurred to me that maybe that's why Rob always had that smell about him. And if any person would do that kind of thing, Rob would be the type to do it. A manager who was with us checked Rob's files and found that he had, in fact, lived on Camp Road when he was hired. By the time of this incident, though... He had moved, so to be clear, Rob did significant damage to a rental property, and when confronted about it by the landlord, claimed that he had a twin brother, and that it was the twin he wanted. Quick thinking, I guess. I was hiking with my friend, and she started telling me how angry she was with her parents for disrespecting her body and decisions. The offense was that her dad had stage 4 cancer and her parents wanted her to take a flu shot before she visited him in California. She was so upset that they would ask her to choose between putting toxins in her body and seeing her dad. And she ended up not getting one and not going to see him. I was so shocked I ended up just never inviting her out again. She's going to be one of those parents that doesn't vaccinate her kids and wonders why her kids either died young or infected others with a perfectly preventable disease. What a freaking butthole. A guy at my school, Dale, was talking about how a guy pulled a collapsible baton on him, so he pulled a gun to defend himself. The cops were called and told him that he may not have been justified in this situation. He framed the story so that he was innocently defending himself against an aggressor. One detail stuck out. This happened in front of the baton guy's house. I asked him what he was doing at that guy's house. Then the truth came out. Dale was at a McDonald's parking lot and got cut off by a baton guy. Dale proceeded to follow the guy for a couple miles, honking, yelling, and giving baton guy the finger. Baton guy pulls into his driveway and goes inside his house. Dale stays outside, yelling at baton guy. Baton guy comes out of his house with his baton to tell Dale to leave. Dale pulls his gun. The cops had already been called by a neighbor. The cop told Dale that he completely escalated the situation by following him to his house and Batten guy may have been in fear for his life since some maniac followed him for a couple miles and camped out in front of his house yelling like a deranged person. When I pointed out that Dale could have just ignored getting cut off in the parking lot, 
He looked at me like that was the last thing he could have done in that situation. It never occurred to him to let a minor annoyance go. He didn't like that I changed the story he was telling everyone from one where he was the hero. Oppressed by the police to a tale of an idiot that overreacted to a small annoyance. He told me that he's not going to tell me any more stories if I'm going to point out his flaws. Dude has a death wish. What a moron. My dad is the kind of person who has 5 new stories to complain about every time you see him. He used to work for this company run by a father-son duo. My dad would always complain about the son. One weekend when I came home from college, his hand was in a brace. My dad had gotten so upset at the son that he slammed his own hand on his desk one day and broke it. Whenever he told this story, it was obvious that my dad wanted sympathy. But nope. He's just a butthole who threw a temper tantrum at work. Oh that reminds me. My mill broke her hand trying to punch my husband once when he was a teenager. She always tells this story like R I am Veribidus and he deserved it. I was less than impressed. A friend told me a story last night about the time she had the beer shoots after a long night of drinking and took a dump in the middle of the platform of the train station in Berlin. Oil. I used to think the Germans were the model of civic responsibility. Then my last time in Munich I watched a car block an intersection when a whole tram was trying to get through, even though there was room to inch up. So now I'm undecided on whether or not your friend was out of place. Sister-in-law telling a story about how her boyfriend got mad and smashed her phone on the ground. Her whole side of the family was up in arms and wanted to kill this guy. I simply asked what happened right before that well. I I threw his phone in the gutter. And there you go. Oof. I I have a friend who would always make his girlfriend's exes sound really terrible. I understand his GF may have left them on a sour note but it's alright to admit that a GF sex was an alright guy. Whenever someone tells me a story about some crazy driver on the road. I pretty much always attribute at least half the blame on the friend. Same with people who had some kind of verbal altercation with wait staff or retail workers. Also once in a while for one reason or the other, like maybe not paying attention while driving we are the crazy driver. The trick is to forgive others because we are just as likely to do it ourselves and we would want forgiveness too. In the last 5 years, I have encountered men or women who have done horrible things to their exes. cheating. Stealing, harassing, etc, and then justified it by saying, I'm not perfect or I get to make mistakes too, which is a huge mind frick, because yes, no one is perfect and everyone gets to make mistakes, but you don't get to cheat on someone for years or steal their resources or hurt their families, and pets, and then get away with it by declaring that crap. Ah, yes. The self-pardon gambit which prohibits others from saying anything about someone's bad behavior. My uncle and I used to work at the same hospital. His wife was pretty high up in administration and got him his job there. He was constantly telling me how he was singled out and written up on several occasions because they didn't feel he earned his job. One day I met him walking across the hospital campus and he told me of his most recent write-up. He went on his usual routine of how it was just all bulls and then told me there's now way telling someone their butt looked good could be sexual harassment. One of my friends was devastated because her boyfriend of 3 years had broken up with her. I did my best to comfort and support her, until she said that she had only, WTF, cheated on him with one guy and didn't understand why he was overreacting. Yikes lol. Maybe not telling a big story about one person. But if someone talks crap about hundreds of people, you know that they are just the worst they probably talk behind your back too. Our malicious compliance is full of these. Lot of great stories over there but every so often you get a guy who was actually the butthole. My sister frequently does this. Her favorite hobby is to comment on our local newspaper's online articles. She says horrible and offensive things, then gets upset because people gang up on her and tell her she's horrible and offensive. She's the one that complains at restaurants or the movies or a store or wherever, but she doesn't get it. I always tell her, if everything smells like crap, check your own shoe first. I have a friend who can just ramble on about customers in a supermarket he works at. Like, a person standing a bit in the way, person is worse than Hitler. Person asking a normal question, person should kill himself. It gets tired really fast hearing him complain about his job. 
and I kinda learn to just ignore it. Yep have one who's a waitress and constantly just complains about it. Definitely leaves out some details sometimes when talking about a rude customer. She'd beg for me to come visit her at work, and the one time I brought other friends it was bad. Then she complained about the tip they left and said I had to make up for it, like WTF. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.